So today we're going to study uh, three different type of problems. Uh, one is called multiples. Another one is about divisibility tests, and then uh, prime numbers. Okay. So uh, let's let's go to the definition of the multiple of a number. You know, when we say they are given two numbers, okay. When we say a number is multiple of another number, that means that number, we're talking about integers only here, okay? So we, uh, we will, uh, uh, let me uh, close it. Okay, so, so that means you can express the number as a product of, uh, as product of, uh, of uh, two numbers, one of the factor will be would be that number B, for example. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, and uh, for example, uh, uh, six is written as two times three, right? Then we can say that six is a multiple of two, but you can also say that six is a multiple of three. Okay, that's just definition. And, uh, and uh, the, so there's a two important properties here. The first one says that if A and B are multiples of C, then add them together will be also a multiple of C. And the subtract uh, A minus B is also a multiple of C. Okay. So that that is uh, just because every um, uh, A and the B both have contains a factor of C. So then add them together, they will continue. Okay, it has the same property. The second one says that if A is multiple B, then every multiple of A is a multiple of a b. Now, how does we understand that? Okay. Okay. Just because, uh, okay, let's do this. Let me, uh, the, I'm going to explain the second one. Uh, if a is a multiple of a b, so a is b times k, right? Then every multiple of a, okay, is going to be a multiple b because every multiple a means you, 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 you times another number here. So it's a B, K, and L. So that is also B multiple B because you have a B times another fact, okay? So uh, uh, this is a little bit abstract, okay? We were more interested in, you know, in numbers. So let's work on some problems. Then we understand the multiple uh, better, okay? So this is a question from the book, I select one problem. So what is the greatest three-digit number? That is a multiple of 13. Now let's understand, okay, first of all, three digit numbers. Three digit numbers are the numbers uh, 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 from 100, right, all the way to 999. So 1,000 is a four digit number. Okay, so the so smallest one, uh, the least uh, three digit number would be 100. The greatest uh, uh, three digit number would be 999, okay? Uh, but we are looking for, we are looking for the greatest three-digit number, which is multiple 13. That means you can, you know, it's divisible by 13, right? It can be written 13 times that number. So how can I, somewhere here, I don't think that 999 is, is a multiple 13. So some number here, you know, is going to be 13 times some integer, okay? This should be this should be smaller than equal to 999. Okay, in I guess you already heard about inequalities. So what I'm going to do is I want to find out the largest possible uh, integer k so that the product is as close as to 999. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to divide 999 by uh, by by 13. So <coughs> You know, you can do it by hands. You can do it by uh, calculate. It's about it's about seventy six point something. Okay, so you can use a if you use a long division, you will get quotient uh, seventy six and then plus a remainder. But so this is a, this is a, the, the number k, right? So the k is integer. So now it's easy to see what is the largest, greatest possible value of the k, right? So that 13 times k is less than 100, uh, uh, less than equal to 999. So, so then you can choose 
76, okay? So the answer will be uh, 13 times 76, and then you multiply this out, okay? Then you get 13 times 76 is gonna be 989, okay, uh, 88, okay? Now, if you use uh, 77, you will get a number uh, greater than greater than 1,000. You know, 13 times uh, 77, it's gonna be 1,001, okay? It's also multiple of 13, but this is already the uh, 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 <coughs> four digit two number, okay? So this is a, uh, how do we, uh, yeah, this is how do we solve the problem. All right. Great. Uh, so that, you know, you can also find the least three digit number that is multiple 13. You, you can find it's the same idea, but then you, 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 you're trying to uh, get a number as close as to 100, right? And now you can do the same, same way. You can find the least three digit number that is, uh, that is a multiple 13. You can try this, right? Who can do that? Find the least uh, uh, three digit number that is a multiple of 13. Can you do that? Yes, yeah, so at least I'm gonna change the problem. You know, if I change uh, greatest to the list, okay, how do you do this? Okay, that is, uh, yeah, okay, well, yeah, 988 is the answer to the question. But if I change greatest to the list, okay, then you have, you have to find the smallest one, right? If you want to find the smallest one, the least three digit number uh, is going to be, you know, 100 should be less than equal to 13K, and you find the smallest possible. Yeah, it's 104 is the answer. So 100 divided by 13. Right? And then you estimate it, it's about seven points, right? Seven point something. So this seven is a quotient, you get a remainder. So the smallest number you can get for K is should be eight, because it's greater than or equal to seven point something. So that's why K should be equal to eight, and the 13 times eight uh, is gonna be 104. This is a list three digit number that is a multiple 13. Okay, so, okay, great. All right, so now let's take a look at uh, the next problem, okay? The next problem is what are the number, what, what number between 100, 200 is both a perfect squares and multiple seven, you know? All right, when we say between 100, 200, okay, that means 100, 200 are not included, okay? They're not included. Now in this particular case, it doesn't matter because you're talking multiple seven. But sometimes like a multiple five, then be careful because 100, 200 is not even good, right? So, so the idea is that, so we use, a, we use a, this condition first, okay? Use a condition first, a multiple seven, okay? Multiple seven, that means you have a seven uh, K, right? And just a show you before, right? A multiple seven must be in this form, seven times some numbers. And this is a sh less than 200, greater than 100, right? So we, it's a between those two numbers. And, uh, you know, uh, what I'm trying to do here is a slightly different from the book, book says. I'm trying, maybe leave it to advance again. So this is a, it's a between those two. So I use the inequality. Let's understand the inequality symbol here, okay? So the same idea, I'm gonna divide 100 by seven. Divide 200 by seven, let's see what do we get, okay? 100 divided by seven is gonna be like 100 divided by seven is gonna be 14, you know, 14 point something, okay? I don't need to know the details. And uh, 200 uh, divided by seven, right? Is gonna be 28 point something. So my K is between those two numbers. So possible for K is gonna be 15, 16, 17, right? And all the way to 28. Okay, 
So seven times one of the numbers should be a perfect square. Then, uh, then you have to be careful, right? You have to have a factor of seven because perfect square, seven itself it cannot be a sum, cannot be a perfect square. So seven k is a perfect square, right? So is a perfect square, then this must be like that, seven times seven times something square, right? Right? So, so that number should be divisible by seven. Okay, we are talking about divisibility later on. So this is, a, when you look at all those numbers, okay, you have a few candidates here for the number. And that is going to be, uh, I'm going to put 18, 19, 20, uh, let me US 28, so I have more space, okay? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And uh, I think it's, it's easy, you can figure out what number it will be, a multiple seven, because this number, yes, contains factor of seven, okay? But 21, Okay, 21 times seven is not a perfect square. So that is the only number you should have, right? So when k is 27, okay, it's because when k is 28, seven k is gonna be seven times 28. Uh, 28 is seven times four. So it's a seven square, two square. It's a 14 square, okay? So that, uh, so then there's only one number here. There's only one number here which is a perfect square, okay? So I suggest you to, whenever you see a question like a multiple of seven, you use that condition first, okay? Multiple seven, use that condition first. Then you try to uh, uh, find the solutions satisfying the second additional condition, like a perfect square, okay? Then you find the, uh, find the, uh, yeah find those solutions, match with another condition, satisfy another condition, okay? All right, uh, all right so let's take a look at this. Uh, yeah, you can, you can work on that. How many integers between two and uh, 1,004 are multiple five? Now this probably is even uh, simpler than the previous one, right? So multiple five, you know, there are a couple ways to do, okay? If you want to, um, if you want to uh, uh, do more directly without solving inequalities, you know, you can say, hey, multiple five is five, 10, so 15, 20, all the way to, I think, 1,000. You just need to count how many numbers there, find the way, okay? So that's, uh, that's one way to do, but, uh, <clears throat> Then you write down each number as, uh, as uh, five times one, here yeah, five times two, five times three, and the last one will be, you know, five times, right? Five times 200. So you see that increase like a two, one, two, three, all the way to 200. So there are 200 integers. The answer is 200, right? But uh, I, I suggest you to use an inequality to solve the problem. A multiple five must be in the form 5K, okay? So that is a between two and 1,004, okay? 1,004, it's obvious, right? So then you, you just want to find out what does the possible value for K? So then two over five, 1,004 divided by five. So K is between those two numbers. And, uh, and these two numbers, this number will be 200 something. And this number will be zero point something. We don't need to know exactly. So that means K is between, uh, is between one, right? And the 200, and including 100. So K could be one. Yeah, K must be integer, so K, could be one, two, all the way to 200. It cannot be larger than 200, right? 
And uh, so you can get then just count how many values k. And that's obvious. It's from one to two hundred. Essentially, it's the same. You know, same idea. But great. Now this is a little bit more challenging. Okay, you have two conditions here. You are looking for integers between one and two thousand twenty. They are multiple of four and six. Right. How do we understand this? Okay. And uh, if I change the end to all, okay, is a multiple four or multiple six? That would be a different problem. Okay. So we are. If I have a time, we come back to this problem later. But let's finish that first. All right. So there are two numbers here, four and a six. Okay, so you have to, so that is a, a number, okay, is a multiple of four and six, if and only if it is a multiple of 12, okay, four times, four and six, they have a list of common fact. 12, okay, then you do the same way as so the 12 K because a multiple of 12 must be in this form is greater than one less than 2020. And I'm going to divide both sides by 12, okay. Uh, 20 divided by 12 is going to be, you know, I'm going to find that 2020 divided by 12 is about 168 something, right? And this one over 12 is definitely less than one. So I just, I don't even do calculation. So that's the value for K. K between something, you know, between those two numbers. So clearly K is going to be one, two, three, all the way to 168. All right. But that's just because we have N here. So if I change N to the word O, then it's more challenging, okay? It's not easy. Either multiple four or multiple six, okay? Then uh, this is a little bit more difficult. If, if, if you want to find the uh, integers, uh, which are multiple six and four together, then you just change the statement. This is a, uh, we are talking about integers which are multiple of 12. All right, uh, let's do this a little bit more complicated, divisible by two, four, and eight. Uh, we are going to check whether a number is divisible by uh, two and four, eight, okay? Uh, let's discuss this first, okay? A, multi a number divisible by two, okay? So a number divisible by two, By two, actually, if only if the unit digit divided by two. So that means it's an even number, okay? So this is really means even number. That's very simple, okay? But how about four? Okay, how about four? How about eight? Okay, how to check a number divided by four? Okay, so we, we need the following fact. Okay, 100 divided by four is going to be 25. So 100 is divided by four. Okay, so if that is the case, then, uh, then any number can be written in the form, can decompose it. Like, uh, let me explain to you. Like, 364, right? It's gonna be 300 plus 64, okay? So you, 300 is divided by four, always, because 100 divided by four, okay? So in order to check whether 364 is divided by four, you just need to look at the last two digits, okay? Right? Yeah. So, so a number, 
let's write down the fact a number is divisible by four if only if the number formed by last two digits last two digits is divisible by four. So it's easy to check whether whether two digits number is divisible by four, right? All right. So for example, uh, let me check. Uh, uh, let me give an example, okay? Okay, let's take a look at the example. Uh, 3,292. All right, so well, we can, you can use a long division to check whether it's divisible by four, but it's not necessary. All you have to do is just, you separate this, right? 32,000 plus 92. All you have to do is check whether 92 is divisible by four. And 92 is divisible by four, then you use a long division, 92, all right? And, uh, and then uh, 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 32, okay? So, 92 is divisible by 4, there are 4, 3,293 is divisible by 4. Just because 32, uh, 100, right, 3,200 is divisible by 4. Okay, you don't need to worry about it. If it's multiple of 100, must be divisible by 4. Okay. Now, to, if, uh, if you want to look at the uh, number, whether, check whether the number, whether it's divisible by 8. Okay, I check a number with it's divisible by eight, then um, it's uh, a little bit more complicated. You, have, you should know the fact 1,000 divided by eight is gonna be, uh, is gonna be 125, okay? This is uh, 1,000 divided by eight is 125. Okay, okay. so, so that means if you are given a larger number, okay, uh, four digit number or even high, okay, if we want to check whether it divided by four, divided by eight, you just look at the last three digits, okay? The last three digits, if it divided by eight, then, uh, then, uh, then, uh, then uh, the whole number divided by eight, okay? Of course, you can do step by step, you know, make sure it's divisible by two, make sure it's divisible by four, right? Because four times eight is, uh, four times two is eight. Okay. But you have to find uh, the quotient first. Okay, so let's check the following number, whether it's divisible by eight. Okay, uh, I'm going to do the following check. Uh, 3,672, okay. Now this number, uh, we can check that 72 is divisible by four, so that's why it's divisible by four. But whether this is divisible by eight, we don't know. So we, we just needed to look at 700, uh, 672, okay? 672, this is uh, divisible by four, eight, then the whole number is doing. You don't need to do the long division for the, for the whole number. All right, so you can 672 divided by eight. All right, eight, 64, all right? So you get, okay? So 672 is divisible by eight. Therefore, so it is, it is, is divisible by eight, right? Just because you check the, the number formed by uh, three digits, last three digits, it's divisible by eight. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so let's move on to next problem. How can we tell whether or not a number is divisible by five. Maybe this would be much easier. 
Yeah, just check the last digit, okay? The, the unit digit should be zero or five, clear. Right. So then it, it just look at the last digit, then you can tell, okay? No problem, right? So, uh, so no matter how long, how big is the number, right? And clearly this is a divisor by, because the last digit number is, the last digit is going to be five, okay? So it's divisible by five, okay? Okay, right, so now move on to the next one. Now, how do we check a number where the number is divisible by three or nine? Okay, so you had a digit. Okay, but do you know why? Can you prove that? Can I just remember? You know, you have a super memory, but right, but uh, you cannot memorize all the stuff. So memorize the idea is better. Okay, why this? Okay, why this is true? Okay, so let me state the fact. Okay, uh, a number is divisible by three, and all respectively by nine if and only if the sum of digits okay is divisible by three if it's nine then divide by nine okay okay why this is true okay let's look at let's look at the number okay look at the you know example it's easy to find an example you can but uh, let's find the reason uh, take a look at the two-digit number, okay? Take a look at the two-digit number. I'm going to use just A, use A and the B to denote it, okay? I put an underline here. A two-digit number is can be written as 10 plus A, 10A plus B, okay? A, B are digits, okay? A, B are digits. Then I can separate the 10 as 9 plus 1. Okay, so nine plus one. Then I have a nine A, so don't worry about nine A, then you have an A plus B. So this is the sum of the two digits. So the two digit number is divisible by nine or divisible by three, if only if the sum of digits should be divisible by nine or three, okay? Because this one is always divisible by nine, of course it's divisible by three. So this is the idea, and, and they can do more, okay? Three digit number. It's going to be 1,100A, 10B, and plus C, okay? So 100 is going to be 99A, so I put the A here, and the 9B, I put the B here, and then C is here. So this is the sum of three digits. But the 99A plus 9B is always divisible by nine. Of course, it divisible by three, so don't worry about that. So you just needed to look at the last digit. Okay. the sum of the three digits, okay? So this is the idea, and I'll give an example. For example, uh, and uh, yeah, let's check whether this is by nine or not, okay? Okay. So let's take a look at this number. It's a very long number, right? So whether this number is divisible by three or nine, let's add them together. One plus six plus seven plus zero plus six plus four plus three. And, uh, and first two, three numbers is going to be uh, 14. And then plus six, 20, plus seven, 27. Okay, uh, yeah, so it's 27. 27 is divisible by nine, okay? So that's why the number on the left-hand side is divisible by nine, right? All right, so now we, we have another one. How can we tell whether or not a number is divisible by 11?
the sum of alternate digits, right? That you got that. So uh, a number is divisible by 11 if and only if the sum of alternating digits right, is divisible by 11. Now, then you can use that to check, but we still want to know why this is true. And okay, why this is true. All right, let's take a look at uh, three digit number. It's a little easy to understand. So it's 1000A plus 100B plus C. Okay. I want to make sure it's 11. So the first one is 99 plus one. And here 11 minus one. So you have a minus, right? So that's why you get an alternating sum, alternating digits. So you get a 99A, 11B, so you don't worry about this, is divisible by 11. This is as a sum of alternating digits, right? So you wanted to make, make the three digit number divisible by 11, you have to just need to look at the sum of the alternate digits. All right, so we not only uh, alternating digits means the digits with alternating sign, okay? A minus, you begin with A, then, you know, begin, yeah, minus plus minus plus your sign, sign, sign here, okay? So let's take a look at example. Let's take a look at example. Uh, I'm going to give a very long number, okay? Okay, so five, zero, two, five, zero, three, nine, six, nine. All right, so let's see if this is a, this is a, a if it's by 11 now. You cannot use long division to check, it takes too much time. So what you do is, Alternating sign is 5 minus 0 plus 2 minus 5 plus 0 minus 3 plus 9 minus 6 plus 9. Okay, this is called alternate, uh, the sum of alternating digits. Right, so let's do it. So I can quickly get rid of 5 and uh, 2 minus 3, negative 1, negative 1 plus 9 is 8, 8 minus six is two, two plus, it's just 11. Okay, so this is a divisible by 11. Therefore, as the original number is divisible by 11. Right? So you just need to do that. So we did uh, no, uh, yeah, we, we learned how to check whether the number divisible by two, divisible by three, divisible by four, divisible by five, and how to check when number divisible by six. Well, you just make sure it's divisible by two and the three. That's fine. And how to check the number divisible by eight. But we already learned that, right? So now there is a one number, which is six, a seven. Okay, how can we tell whether or not a number is divisible by seven? There is a strange formula here. Okay, I hope you understand. Okay, this is a formula. I just gave an example, a three-digit number. Okay, a three-digit number using uh, a, a, a and b and c. Okay, a, b, c is three digits. And put the underline there. It's not product of three digits, it's just the three digit number. This can be decomposed like a 100 times A plus 10B plus C. And we can have a such identity. Okay? <laughs> and then you see that this is always divisible by seven, right? 21 is always divisible by seven. 
So all you have to do is where's the checker, where's the number divided by seven, you just needed to look at this two, okay? So clearly, ABC is divisible by seven in the if and the only if, a, B, you drop the last digit, you get two digit number, minus two times, minus double the last digit, this is divisible by seven. Okay. Why? Because when you look at, you know, you can put 10 here, but 10 has no factor of seven. So that's why essentially you get, the, you know, equivalent to say A, B, minus two c's is divisible by seven, okay. And uh, this is true for, for a number with more digits, not just three digits. All you have to do is just remove the, the last digit, you get one digit less, a, a number, right? And you make sure this is a divisible by seven. Okay. Right. Uh, let's check the following Remember, okay, four, five, nine. Uh, let's see, okay, take a look at the example. 3,213. All right, so this is a four digit number. If I use the same, I, okay. So step away, I can, I drop three, all right. Yeah, let me rewrite this number again. So I drop three, okay. So I get two three digit number. The three digit number. Okay, so what I get is three three hundred twenty-one minus twice of the last digit digit. Three hundred twenty-one minus six. I'm going to have a three hundred. Uh three hundred fifteen. All right, so then I have to check whether 315 divided by seven, right? If this is divided by seven, then the origin number divided by seven. But you can repeat, use the same idea to do this, okay? Now you can use the long division quickly check whether 317 is divided by seven. But if you don't, and you get this number, you, 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 you delete that five, so you get, 31 minus twice times five, okay? So 31 minus uh, 10, which is 21. Now, clearly 21 is easy to check whether it is by seven. So this is a, yeah. So 21 is divisible by seven. So your price, uh, uh, 315 is divisible by seven. If it's 315 divided by seven, then this implies 3,213 is divisible by seven. Okay, so that is, that is how do we do the problem. Okay. I was told that we should have a break, right? After 40 minutes or 40 minutes, right? So exactly have uh, right now, almost 40 minutes. Yes. Okay. So this is a problem, right? So you do step by step. You have a very uh, you have a very long number, you know, was uh, more than a hundred units. You can step by step to do this, okay? You remove the last digit and you double it and you subtract it from uh, the number formed by the remaining digits then you get one digit less. And you check whether this divisible by seven. If uh, you can use that, then you, can, you repeat the same procedure and slowly, right? Step by step. Finally, like me, in this case, I got 21, and it's easy, 21 divided by seven. So then you go back to, uh, uh, yeah, then you got 315 without the divisible by seven, okay? Uh, all right. Uh, Let's uh, take a break and then we continue. <laughs>